Plants take in carbon dioxide and water to do photosynthesis, where they make glucose uh, to add them grow. So we know as well that photosynthesis occur in the leaves where they contain chloroplast and the chlorophyll where it absorbs the sunlight to do all those stuff. But the whole plant will actually need to get those glucose, all those nutrients, in order for them to grow. So therefore, that must be some way that we can transport that sugar around the plant. And that is that is where translocation comes into play. So translocation is basically the movement or transport of assimilates around the plants. Assimilates is a term that we use to say uh, the substances that are made from the synthesis, so like sugars. It's important to note that even though we make glucose in photosynthesis, but really glucose is converted to make sucrose uh, to be transported around. So it's mainly sucrose rather than glucose. Glucose is easily broken down by respiration. So if we have something that can be easily reacted during transportation, it's kind of a waste. So therefore the plant actually converts it to sucrose to prevent it from being reacted that easily. And here we'll be looking at the process of translocation. And there are three parts. Uh, so we start here, which is the first stage, which is called phloem loading by the apoplast pathway. From the previous chapters, you will know that xylem uh, transports water and mineral ions, and phloem transports sugars, or in this case, assimilates. And so therefore, after the sugars being made in the leaves, it needs to actually be loaded into the phloem for it to be transported to other parts of the plant. So before we actually go into detail of the process, you need to know some of the structures of phloem here as well. So, so this is the actual phloem, or we call it the sieve tube original phloem is formed by different cells stacked together and then their cell wall broke down in parts of it uh, to allow the substance to flow through a bit more easily and so we say each one of these individual parts of the sieve tube or the phloem is called the sieve tube element and then we've got the sieve plates which are basically the the end plates of the uh, cell original cell walls but has gaps in it and we've got a companion cell. This is the nucleus of the companion cell because in order for uh, us to facilitate fluent or easy transportation of the sugars, we need to make sure that there's actually not a loss of uh, substances or organelles here to stop that flow. So therefore, the uh, survival of the actual flow relies on these companion cells. It is important that they are alive and like in xylem because the process in phloem loading in the apoplast pathway is what we call an active pathway. It requires energy. If we don't have a living cell, we can't actually generate any of those ATPs for it to actually occur. Then a little bit more detail in the companion cell, which will make more sense as we go on to do the actual process of it. There are some certain proteins that you need to pay attention to. So first of all, this is the proton pump. Also, we've got something called co-transporters. So keeping in mind, this is what happens in the leaves. And so the imagine that the palisade mesophyll cells have just done photosynthesis and they made lots of sugar, which is converted into, su into sucrose. And these sucrose exist here. We want to get the sucrose from this area into this area to be transported to different places. So in the very beginning, we got protons being pumped across the proton pumps from the companion cell to the surrounding area. And in this process, we use up ATP and this is active transport. This in turn increases the proton concentration outside the companion cell. And linking from that bit, because there's an increased proton concentration outside, they would just, you've generated a proton concentration gradient. So what they would want to do is to come back in here through the co-transporters. But the funny thing about co-transporters, as the name implies, they can't just transport one thing. They have to co-transport something else. And in this case, it will be sucrose. So the co-transporter won't actually work if it's just proton or just sucrose, but it will only work if you contain both things together. So obviously this in turn increases the sucrose concentration inside the companion cell, which is what we want, because we're now one step closer for the sucrose to actually get into the uh, sieve tube. And linking in as well, because there's a higher sucrose concentration gradient here, they would naturally want to diffuse into somewhere that has a low sugar concentration gradient. So therefore, naturally, it will go through the plasmodesmata, which are the gaps in the uh, cell wall, into 
the sieve tube. Because you're moving more substances into the sieve tube element, you are decreasing the water potential inside. Because there's more grist here, so therefore there is a lower water potential inside the sieve tube elements, so therefore it will uh, sort of attract the water to go from a higher water potential to a lower water potential area. And this is a rather important step because we need more water in here and as well as the sucrose in order to generate a turgor pressure and it's by turgor pressure that it will move the substances along the phloem. And we say with this turgor pressure we can allow mass flow to happen which is the second step referring to the movement of the assimilates to different places along the phloem. And there you have it, that is translocation. So a very quick recap. At the very beginning, we've got protons inside the companion cell and they are pumped out of the companion cell by active transport through the proton pumps using up ATP. Then these protons, having uh, had a higher concentration in here, they want to go back into the companion cell, so therefore they get co-transported with the sucrose through the co-transporters by the facilitated diffusion. This leads to a higher concentration of sucrose inside the companion cells and therefore they will diffuse through the plasmodesmatas into the sieve tube elements. And because of this increased concentration in the sieve tube elements, you are decreasing the water potential inside, therefore water will move in as well, uh, generating a turgor pressure for mass flow.